Is it possible for one to be forgiven and still be guilty? How the Spirit feels so intimidated toward day five of Yom Kippur readings. Let's go to Psalm chapter 32. The word says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom Yahweh imputes no crookedness, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Blessed is the man to whom Yah imputes no crookedness. Let me give you a couple of scenarios. You're sitting in grade school, third, fourth grade, whatever, and something takes place. Someone in your class, a classmate, does something that is destructive. The teacher is out of the room at the moment, and when they return, they see what's taking place. Something's broke. Something's out of place. There's an there's a mess to be looked at, and they began to inquire, who did this? Well, if they had left the room and said, nobody get out of your seat, and we'll be right back, no one gets out of your seat. If the accident, the mess, the destruction took place because someone disobeyed that, got out of their seat, and was doing what they were not supposed to be doing, that's the reason that the incident took place. If you yourself had remained in your seat as instructed and was minding your own business and doing what you were supposed to be doing, there is no fear of guilt. Somebody else is to blame. Now, if you're the one that got out of your chair and you're the one that caused the destruction, you're looking around and wondering who's going to tell on me. Will anyone say anything or are we all going to share in this punishment together? <clears throat> That's not fun. Uh, there's, there's a lot of um, celebrities, we'll put it that way, at the moment, at the time of this recording. And... Uh, there are for um, I won't go into the reasons why, but they are living in fear. They have been a part of a party scene for years and years, and it's all being exposed and revealed. They're all corporately guilty. They were participating together through coercion and manipulation and threats and so forth. They kept the victims of their partying silent and now it's all being revealed and they're all wondering uh am i going to suffer public humiliation prison terms or worse those that were not a part of that whole thing have nothing to worry about you weren't there i wasn't there we didn't even know it was going on so it's not necessarily anything that has to do anything with us. There is this feeling then of guiltlessness. I'm, I'm free. I'm, there, I'm, I'm beyond charge here. I didn't do anything wrong. That feeling is wonderful when it doesn't apply to you. But when you are caught up in it, whatever it might be, personal or corporate, Whatever the situation, when you are guilty and you know you're guilty, there is this sense of condemnation, this sense of judgment hanging over your head, and you know that the one who is the judge of all of these things, he sees, he sees fully, he knows every detail, there's no minute detail that is hidden from him, he is looking, seeing, and knowing all. On that day, uh, by Yom Hahu, on that day, when all mankind stands before the judge of all the earth and they have to give an account of their lives, that is a day of, to be feared. Even those of us 
who would say, you know, we, we stand among the righteous. And we prayed and we pray consistently and we study and we we seek to be obedient and we, we try to do all the things that we know we're supposed to do and we abstain from the things that we know that are contrary to his word. Even still, to stand before him who knows every inclination and frame of thinking, nothing, no, no minute detail is hidden from him. To stand before under that level of scrutiny is terrifying. Especially we know what the, the potential judgments would be. Yet this psalm says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Normally we look at the word blessed, and we think of the word baruch. Here it's a different word. It's eser. And it means uh, to be blessed or to be favored. But it means to be um, praiseworthy or notable. Uh, It's uh, the idea that, um, I'm going to pull it up here again and and just give you a better definition here. Uh, Happy. That's the word I was looking for. It is the word happy. At peace. I can relax. Because my sins have been forgiven. Sometimes we have someone who would say to us, I forgive you for whatever the transgression might be. And we hear what they're saying, but we are looking into their eyes and we're watching their demeanor displayed before us and wondering, I heard what they said, but did they mean what they said? Perhaps your spouse has looked at you and said, I forgive you. Hallelujah. (laughs) But did they mean what they said? Do they really forgive me? Am I I, going to get the silent treatment? I'm forgiven, but am I restored? There is the difference. Blessed and happy is the man whose transgression has been forgiven, whose sin has been covered. There has been a covering of the sin so that it no longer speaks. It's no longer testifying against us. And then it says in verse 2, same word again, Esser, blessed and happy and praiseworthy, is the man to whom Yahweh imputes imputes no crookedness. Uh, again, this is an interesting word, imputing here. And uh, I'm going to pull this up again for us. And it is the word chasav. And it is to say... Yah is not meditating, thinking about, um, considering our sins against us. So the old hymn or the old gospel song that says, what sins are you talking about? I don't remember them anymore. As, as human beings, we forgive, and then we are involved in the process of trying to overcome and forget. When someone has done us wrong, when someone has harmed us in some way and offended us, we can choose to forgive, but it, it's almost impossible to forget. How do we know that we are forgiven if we keep remembering If a transgression comes to our thinking, to our remembrance, but it doesn't cause us the triggering and the pain again, it lets us know, okay, I remember, but I'm beyond it now. Some people, when they are repentant to you, you forgive them, but you're not able to trust them and restore them. Others you can, and there are the ones that we choose not to remember, and if it comes to mind, we choose not to accept the pain associated with it. And that's what Yah has done for us. May this Yom Kippur 
season on this Shabbat be beneficial to you. May your sins be covered and may you be happy with the end result. And we'll see you again next week. Thank you.